Hi, my name is Oliver and in this video I'll be teaching you how to animate Falling Rain in After Effects. So to get started, I've illustrated this very simple umbrella. I have separated the top from the handle. And the reasoning behind this is that we want to apply some effects to the top that we don't really want applied to the handle itself. Now if you want to follow along with this tutorial, there's a download link for the project file down below. So you can try and animate it on your own or take a better look at the keyframing. So we'll actually start by creating the paths for the rain. Now we want the rain to sort of fall down from the top, hit the umbrella and then slide off, hit the ground and splash out. So some of the rain will just hit the umbrella, splash out, some will slide down onto the ground and then splash out, and some will be in the background and only splash onto the ground. So it's just to differentiate everything and make it a bit more interesting so the sort of rain particles aren't doing the same thing. So to create this rain, we will start out by selecting the path tool and we want to enable the stroke and set it to some sort of blue color. Now this light blue works really well on this dark background. And we also want to disable the fill. So press on the fill and just disable it and click OK. So we want the rain to start above the composition. So we can go a bit up and let's say we want it to start right here. We click, hold down shift and then we say it hits the umbrella right around here. Then we can zoom in and now we want it to slide off the umbrella and then hit the ground. So we select a point on the ground, so we can see we have the shadow, it's sort of our plane for the ground. And we want it to hit right around here. So we can click and drag this out sort of like this. So you can see that it hits and then it slides for a bit and hits the ground right around here. So you can adjust this as you'd like, but we'll just start out with this one and that looks fine for now. So you can adjust the stroke width if you want the rain to be really thick or you want it to be really thin, but I think that around the 13 pixel mark is, is fine for this project. And of course, this really depends on the settings of your composition. If it's a very big composition, very large one, uh, you will of course need a bigger stroke size. So let's start animating this rain. We can just call this line number one, go into it and open it up. Now you see we have the shape layer and what we want to do is click the add and then we want to add a trim paths. So what trim path essentially does is that it allows us to animate the path. And if we open it up, you can see that we have some different properties that we can change. We have the start and the end. Now, if we drag the end, you can see that this becomes shorter and we sort of have to decide how long our rain is going to be. So you have to imagine that it starts from up here and maybe we want it to go down here. Now, if we drag the offset, we can just drag it down so you can actually see the length of this. And I think this is about fine and we can try and work from this from the start. So if we start with the offset at zero, we can add a keyframe and let's just zoom in a bit, go a bit ahead and then we can set this to 360. So what this essentially means is that it will loop one round. So it will go down here into the ground and then it will start up here at the top again. So the thing we have to make sure now is that at the start, you can see there's a bit visible. So we actually have to go into the shape and the path and just drag this up so you can't really see when it appears up here at the start again. So right now we should actually already have this animation. And now you have to decide whether you want this to be quicker or slower. I might want this to be a bit quicker. So drag this in and you can see already now we actually have some nice looking rain. So what we're going to do is alt click the offset, alt or option click, and we'll just type in the expression loop out, parenthesis and semicolon. So what this essentially does is that it takes these two keyframes and then when the animation is done, when we add the last keyframe, it just repeats it. So it's sort of just looping the animation. And you can see if we play this, it's just looping. And that's really what we want. So after we have done this, we want to animate a bit of splash at the bottom as it hits the ground. So we can just zoom in here and we actually just want to do that in the same shape layer. That's just easier that way. So we can take the shape and the trim paths, press command or control G to group it. And we can call this the rain. Then we actually want to draw a new shape layer. So we're going to the pen tool and remember you don't want to select this rain group, just select the layer itself. 
and we just click down here. So we can't really click on that exact point, but we can alter it in a bit. So just click right next to it, click up here, and we can drag it out. So sort of like a, a little splash, and we can just drag this into the center. And then we select the layer again. We want to select the pen tool and just draw one on the other side. So they don't have to be the exact same. You can alter them a bit, play around with it, and drag this into the center as well. So we go down to the strokes and we select them, press Command G to group them. And then we can go to the add and we can add another trim paths. So this is going to be a bit different. We're actually going to animate the start and the end properties. So we can set both of them to zero. Then we can go to the point as it just hits the ground. So that's right here. Add a keyframe to both of them. And this may take around six frames, seven frames or so. We can play around with it. So we press Command or Control and right arrow key. So just go one keyframe ahead at a time. And we set both of them to 100. So right now you can't see anything, but that's because we have to offset these. So if we select one of them, press all the option, right arrow key, we have offset them. So as you can see, we have the splash. It's way too slow right now, but we can fix this in the easing process. So just press F9, go into the graph editor, and we can just drag this up a bit so we can actually see what we're doing, and deselect the offset. So this easing is going to be a bit extreme, at the start, we really want to emphasize the speed. So this is the value graph. You can select it down here. And we want the value change at the start to be very high. So we'll actually just drag the handles up. And then we want it to ease out towards the end. So drag these handles in. So you can see it really de-accelerates quickly. And it really has that sort of explosion splash effect. So this looks sort of like a water splash. And now we also want to loop this. But the way we're going to do this is a bit different. So the problem here is that if we were to loop this animation out, it wouldn't really line up with the bottom one. And the reasoning behind this is that it starts looping out just as, as the last keyframe sort of ends. And therefore this would loop out at this point, this would loop out at this point, this would loop out at this point. So in some way we need them to loop out at the same point. And the way we do this is that we actually go to the very last keyframe of the animation then we just add a keyframe to all properties and we go to the very start and add a keyframe to all properties. That way we sort of tell After Effects that this is the start point of our animation, this is the end point. And now if we go into the offset and copy this expression, click Alt or Option on the other ones and paste it in, you actually tell After Effects that it just has to loop this sort of keyframe interval. And that way when we play it back, you can see that it times up every single time. So now if we actually zoom out and preview this animation, you can see that we have this rain. Right now it doesn't look that great because we only have that sort of one particle or, or one line of rain, but we are quickly going to fix that. We're actually just going to take this line and press Command and Control D to duplicate it. And now we're going into this one and we're going to alter the path. So this is the sort of splash. We can just name the splash for convenience sake. And we'll go into the rain and the shape layer. And now we want to alter this shape. So we can select these two first points. We want those to be linear. And we can just sort of hold down shift and drag them to the side. So maybe we want this to hit right here. Um, but we also want to change this point. We don't want it to be in the same Y position. Maybe this hits a bit further down. And of course the splash would maybe be over here and just alter that so it sort of slides down. And then we would take our splash and we can drag that all the way over here and we have to make sure that it lines up with the other path sort of like this. And now if we play this back, you can see that very quick, quickly we have created two of these sort of particles. Now we of course want to offset this animation but we'll do that towards the end. Right now we'll just focus on creating every single particle. So we can select this line, duplicate it again. Just the same process, go into the rain. Now we might want this one to hit, let's say over here. Now, because we're going to the other side of the umbrella, we might actually want the path to go in the other direction. So we can select the point down here and drag it over. 
So this might hit right around here. And we can just sort of adjust it so we get a result that we like. Sort of like this. And again, we take the splash and we drag it over here. Have to make sure you have selected the splash and line it up. And now we might actually just want one that hits the umbrella but doesn't really hit the ground. So we can duplicate it again. Go into the contents and the rain. So now we actually might just want to delete the last point of, of this path. So we can select it and delete it. That way we only have this straight line. And if we select that straight line like this, let's say we go over here and then this should hit right around here. Now we of course also want to alter the splash. So we'll click on the splash, go down and select that. And we have to drag it all the way up here. So we just have this splash on the umbrella itself. Now you really just have to repeat this process until you get enough particles to a point where you like the result. Of course, right now it's pretty hard to see uh, whether this would look good because it happens simultaneously. But you can see from, from this one that you might actually want uh, some, some of the particles to fall behind. So we can just do that really quickly. Take this number four and duplicate it. And we just go into the rain and the shape. And now we can just select the path. So let's say this hits here. And then of course we want to drag it behind. So it should hit the ground right around here. And we take the splash and line it up. So it's basically the same process. And this is all about tweaking the paths and sort of getting a result that you like. And we of course have to remember that this line should go behind the umbrella. And we can then duplicate it to add another one. And then we go into the path again. And this time we maybe want it to hit over here. And we want it to hit maybe a bit further up. And align the splash again. Like that. So now we can zoom out and take a look at what we have gotten so far. You see that we have all of these particles, but there's a few problems. One of them being that some of the particles move way too slowly. Because as you can see, this one on the right doesn't have to travel as far. Therefore, we just have to press U and speed it up. So the way we do this is that we just select the last keyframes and drag them in a bit. So as you can see, that particle looks a lot better right now. And we might also want to adjust all of them just a tiny bit so they are not the exact same. So this is just by selecting the last one and dragging them out a bit or in. Just make it a bit random, honestly. And these two last ones, they're going straight down, so they might want to move a bit faster than the rest. Like this. And now we can just see if we need one more particle. This should actually be fine. So what we are going to do is that we will just take these one by one and try and offset them. So again, this is basically random. So there's no real way to do this. This is just by feel. So just keep on playing around with it until you get a result that you like. So now when we play this back, you can see that we may lack a bit of rain over here to the right side. And the way we can simply fix this is that we can just select one of the lines that go behind. So maybe this one, and we can just drag it over to this side instead and try and see how that feels. So that feels a bit better. And now we have actually animated the rain. Now, of course you can add a lot more properties. You could animate sort of the stroke width or you could animate the end of the trim path. So there's a lot of possibilities, but this is really sort of the base and then you can try and play around with it. You might want to add a bit of animation to the umbrella because right now it seems pretty stiff. So we can take the top of the umbrella and parent it to the handle. Then we select the handle and we want to adjust the anchor point. So select the pan behind tool, drag it down to the bottom because we want to add a bit of rotation to the bottom right here. 
then we can go in, press P, and then press R. Hold down Shift and press R, that is. You can right-click the position and separate the dimensions. So now we want to work with the Y position and the rotation. So let's go to the start and add a keyframe to both of them. You can just go one second ahead. Add a bit of rotation, so maybe around five degrees. And we just want to push this up a bit, sort of like this. Then we can actually go to the start and we just want to push it down a bit and maybe go negative five in the rotation. So we just want some subtle motion and we want to take the starting keyframes so we can actually loop it, copy them, go one second ahead and paste them. Then we can select all of them and press F9, go into the graph editor. And right here, we just want to work with one of them at a time so we can actually see them properly. So select the Y position and we'll just do a standard easing, so just ease them a bit more like this because we sort of want this to oscillate and therefore we don't want any extreme easing. We just want the sort of basic easing, but just pushed a bit further. Then we can alt click, alt or option click the Y position and type in loop out, semicolon, copy that and just paste it onto the rotation. And to make it a bit more interesting, we'll actually just take the rotation, hold down Alt or Option, and click the right arrow key two times. That way we'll offset them a bit. And if we just make this a bit bigger, so you can actually see what's going on. Try and play this back. And as you can see right now, the rotation is way too extreme, but we can easily fix that. So select the rotation, and go into the graph editor. We just select all three points, hold down Command and Control, Click the top point and just drag it in like this. And we can sort of take a look at this. Maybe it's still a bit too extreme. Just drag it down. And we can also go in and change the position. So that's just done in the same way. Drag it down a bit and try and play it back. So as you can see, this is a really subtle animation, but it's just to make the umbrella come to life and we also might want to add some effects to the top of the umbrella just because the rain is hitting it so it wouldn't be completely still. So we can go to the effects and presets, search for turbulent displace, drag that onto it. And right now you can see it's way too extreme, but we really just want to lower the size quite a bit. And then we also want to lower the amount. And you can just see it's a bit of displacement and if it's not in motion it's quite hard to see therefore we will alt or option click the evolution and before we actually do that the thing the evolution does is just animate the turbulent displace so if i drag this up so you can actually see the displacement you can see that it just becomes animated and we can alt or option click that type in time times 1000 and what this does is that it changes the evolution by 1000 every second. And if we play this back, you can see there's a bit of subtle motion just as the rain hits. And because the rain is not hitting at the start, we want to animate this to start. So you can see the rain starts hitting here. So here we can add a keyframe for the amount. Then we can go to the start and just set it to zero. And we might want to zoom out a bit and try and preview the final animation. So as you can see, that's how you animate rain. And of course, you can alter this in a lot of ways, add some effects. You can also animate a lot more things within the trim paths and the sort of path and stroke itself. And there's really a lot of possibilities with this. So I hope that you take this tutorial and create some amazing things yourself. And I'll be so glad if you share it with me on Instagram at Olio Randolph. That's a link in the description. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, post a comment down below and tell me if you could use this for anything and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.